As Nazi soldiers occupying the Soviet Union lay in their cots after some of the most gruesome battles in World War II, they used to be awoken by a familiar sound. The quiet humming was always followed by an explosive attack on their valued warehouses, railway stations, vehicles, and fuel depots, and the enraged top Nazi officials would continually look for the elusive pilots to no avail. These enemies were so feared and hated by the Nazis that an offer was made that anyone who downed one of these pilots would automatically receive the prestigious Iron Cross Medal. However, the Axis powers soon realized that they were looking for the wrong people, and that the attackers were actually women from the Soviet Union's Night Witches, the first all-female units to engage in mid-air combat and give them hell. Women in Service Flying and aviation were widely popular in the 1930s Soviet Union, and thousands of women belonged to private flying clubs. However, although women were allowed to join the front lines with the army in support roles, they weren't commonly allowed in the Soviet Air Force, and many of them wanted to be gunners or pilots to fly and execute their own missions. From the beginning of the war, Soviet pilot Colonel Marina Raskova began receiving letters from women all across the Soviet land about their interest in joining the men on the conflict. These were mostly amateur pilots or aviation fanatics. Then, in June of 1941, the Axis troops broke into Russia from the west. About four million troops pushed into the Soviet Union during Operation Barbarossa, the largest invading force ever seen in the history of warfare, and one of the most vicious attacks of World War II. By the fall, the Nazis and their allies were threatening to overtake Moscow, while Leningrad, or what we know today as St. Petersburg, was under siege, and the Red Army was struggling to keep the front strong. Meanwhile, thousands of women kept sending letters to Colonel Raskova. Many of them had lost brothers, sons, husbands, or their own villages and homes ravaged by the Nazis, and they were willing to sacrifice their lives in the name of their nation. Known as the Soviet Emilia Earhart, Raskova was one of the country's most influential and beloved women. She was the first female navigator in the Russian Air Force, and a long-distance flight record-breaker. Joseph Stalin was one of Raskova's admirers, so she showed him the letters and convinced him to have the Soviet Air Force accept women as combat pilots. Stalin eventually agreed, and women rushed to enlist. With the pressure of an encroaching enemy, and desperate to turn their luck around, Stalin and his team re-evaluated the strict Air Force policy, and some women were even integrated into regiments to fight alongside male pilots. Then, on October 8, 1941, Stalin ordered the deployment of three all-female Soviet Air Force fighting groups. Not only would the women fly their own missions and drop ammunition, but they were also under return fire orders, making the Soviet Union the first country in the world to have women engaging in combat. Raskova then started to assemble the teams. From over 2,000 applicants, she selected 400 for each of the units. The selected trainees, primarily students from ages 17 to 26, were then transferred to the Engels School of Aviation. During an intensive year at Engels, the women learned how to fly, navigate, and maintain their aircraft, the kind of training that would typically take several years to complete. After finishing the program, the most promising pilots were assigned to the 586th Fighter Aviation Regiment, the moderately qualified ones went to the 587th Bomber Aviation Regiment, and the least fit were sent to the 588th Night Bomber Aviation Regiment. Despite being last place at Ingalls Aviation School, the women of the 588th Night Bomber Aviation Regiment would become some of the most feared warriors of their time. Coffins with Wings Beyond their steep learning curve, the female pilots faced skepticism and harassment from some of their male personnel, who believed they added no value to the effort against the Axis. Unprepared for women pilots, the female Air Force units wore hand-me-down uniforms from fellow male soldiers, including oversized steel-toed boots. Frequently, the women had to stuff their clothing and shoes with ripped-up bedding to get them to fit. Still, despite the many obstacles, the women were proud of their hard work. Although attacking Germans was their primary job and top priority, the flyers also did needlework, patchwork, dancing, and plane decoration, painting flowers on the side of their aircraft's fuselage during their downtime. The women from the 588th had received old Polikarpov PO2 biplanes because of a lack of aircraft available for them. Mainly used as crop dusters and training planes, these light two-seater aircraft, first flown in 1927, were out of date and needed serious maintenance. They were even known around the base as coffins with wings. 
mostly made out of plywood, the PO2s were prone to mid-air explosions. They also offered no protection from the elements during the harsh Soviet winters because of their exposed canopy. In addition to the plane's limited weight capability and Air Force budget cuts, they lacked parachutes, radar, and radios. Instead, the women were forced to use rudimentary tools, such as flashlights, pencils, maps, and compasses. With a top speed of 90 miles per hour, and only capable of carrying a single bomb underneath each wing, the added weight forced the women to fly low, rendering them easily spottable to the enemy and forcing them to only operate at night. But the PO2s also had several advantages, including not showing up on radars or infrared indicators due to their wooden composition, as well as more maneuverability due to their low weight, making them harder to shoot down by the massive enemy planes. The Silent Attacker On June 28, 1942, the women from the 588th performed their first mission, disrupting the invading Nazi forces' sleep and morale by targeting their headquarters in Soviet land. Soon after beginning their runs, it became clear to the top Soviet Air Force that the 588th performed excellently and that the group was a real asset to the effort. Each of their sorties was extremely dangerous, as the Germans surrounded their likely targets with concentric circles of searchlights and flak guns. Consequently, the women devised a strategy to foil the enemy and reach their targets. Flying in groups of three PO2s, each with a pilot up front and a navigator in the back, the first two aircraft would go into the area as bait to attract German spotlights, flying in circles and veering off in different directions. Then, when they neared their target, one of the aircraft would release a flare to light it up. The pilot in the third PO2 would then fly towards the well-lit mark, and upon receiving a signal from her navigator, she would turn the aircraft's engine off and drift near the target in almost complete silence, with only a faint whooshing sound of wind through the struts signaling an imminent attack. Once above the target, the navigator would drop her bombs, the pilot would restart the engine, and the formation would fly off, only to come back and switch places until they'd all exhausted their ammunition. The six-woman team would then return to base to reload their bombs, repair any damages, and refuel for the next sortie. Due to their two-bomb armament, the women from the 588th often flew up to 18 missions in a single night, sometimes receiving severe resistance from the enemy. On one occasion, Nadezhda Popova, one of the most famous 588th pilots, returned from an operation with almost 50 bullet holes in her aircraft, helmet, and even her map. The Night Witches The psychological effect of the all-female fighting group raids took a significant toll on the German troops of Operation Barbarossa. Because of their lack of radios and wooden-made aircraft that did not appear on radar, the women became feared, silent ghosts. When the Nazis found out that their vicious attackers were mainly young females, the invading German troops began speaking different theories about the elusive female pilots. Some believed the women were all criminals, taken out of jail and sent to the front as punishment, while others were sure that they were administered sinister injections that allowed them to see in the dark. Due to the whooshing sound of the incoming aircraft with the turned-off engine, the Nazis gave the women of the 588th the nickname Night Witches, as the noise was similar to sweeping brooms. The women of the 588th didn't care about the derogatory term and adopted the nickname with pride. After the Axis powers failed Operation Barbarossa, the three fighting groups continued to fly until May 4th, 1945, only three days before Germany's surrender. Despite their undeniable success, the Night Witches Regiment was disbanded six months after the end of World War II and were not invited to attend Moscow's Victory Day Parade in May of 1945 because the top brass determined that their planes were too slow. Ultimately, they lost a total of 30 pilots, including Colonel Roskova, who never returned from her first mission. 24 of the flyers were eventually awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union title, making the all-female 588th Night Bomber Aviation Regiment one of the most decorated Soviet units in history. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more stories on fearless pilots and their exploits, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button.